Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. I am going to be showing you how I built this dashboard, step-by-step, -step, whole process, and we're gonna use nothing but this tiny little table as our source data. I just wanna illustrate how much you can do with very, very little data if you just get a little creative with how you do your visualizations. And we're gonna show the whole thing, start to finish the whole process. Yeah, let's get into it. Here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our background color. I'm using a dark background in this one and we're gonna then drop in our shapes I'm using rounded rectangles. That's typically my building block for most of my designs. And as always, you can change the roundedness of your rounded rectangle in the upper left corner. I'm gonna update this to have a gradient fill. We're doing a blue over across to another lighter blue and I use a little transparency here just so you can kind of see the background color shine through. Now I wanted a little header on this one, so I got a round same size corner rectangle. You see it here, it's the third section where rectangles are. I dropped that in and what I did with it is I just made it a gradient fill from a slightly lighter blue across to fully transparent. That just gives me a little separate section with a nice clean gradient. I think it looks nice, kind of feels glassy to me. And of course we got to drop in our text. Hey, don't be scared to get a little creative with your fonts. You, we don't always have to use this Calibri or whatever the default is on your system. Try mixing it up. Try something different. Now I'm going to drop in my title text here for each of my sections. Sweden, Denmark, Norway. These are the three countries in the data set. And then what we're going to do is one by one go into these, delete the text out of them, and in the formula bar hit equals, and point them at the cell with the value that we want. Once you do this, you gotta restyle them. It's just gonna pull over the styling from whatever uh, cell you're referencing, but it just takes a sec to do that. Yeah, and then we just repeat the process for the other values is there as well. Now I know I wanna show how much these have changed since the previous year's recording. So I'm gonna go over to our table. So what I've done here is I've inserted a pivot table, but what I've done for the values, if you right click them, go to field settings, you'll see you can show data as difference from a previous year. This is a really useful tool for doing automatic calculations in your pivot tables. And we're going to repeat the same process we did before, except point these obviously at the cell with that change that we just entered. Oh, and one last little thing I forgot. We want to, of course, label this properly so people know what this plus X amount value is. Now I want to have a little bit of separation between these. So I'm actually going to drop in a little shape. This is just going to be a rectangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the fill of this rectangle to a gradient. This is a gradient from a white that's fairly transparent to a fully transparent white. I think this makes like a nice little subtle separation and we're kind of continuing with that glassy theme we used in our header. So now it's time to add our geo chart. Um, what I've done here is I've taken our original table and what I've done is I've just switched the year in the country. So instead of having columns for each country now, we have two columns, one for each year, and the countries are now in the rows. This is gonna be a better format for making the geo chart we wanna build. Just highlight our table, insert, Go to maps. I'm actually gonna change my data selection here to just show 2022, the most recent value. Okay, so there's our geo chart. Now, obviously this doesn't look how we want it to, so we're gonna clean it up. First thing we do, we take out this title. I'm gonna take out this legend. I don't think we're gonna need it for what we're building here. I'm also gonna remove the background. And then we're gonna click into the series section, go over to our series options, and we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna change our map area to only regions with data. And we're just gonna update these colors. I'm gonna do this and this. All right, once we've got those colors updated, we're just gonna get it to the right size and fit it in there. And I actually want this to have a little more depth, so I'm actually gonna add a shadow. It's under the uh, format chart area option, or excuse me, format data series. And I also wanna give it a little bit of an outline. Maybe make it a little transparent so it's not quite as bright. There we go. Okay, so this looks good, but the problem is this geo chart, it's not really helping to tell us anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some bar charts on top of it to make this a little easier to interpret. So we're gonna take that table we already created and just select one country, go to insert, hit bar chart. Now obviously this doesn't look quite right, so we're gonna clean it up. So same as always, we're gonna delete the title, remove the backgrounds, etc. I'm gonna update my font color so we can see it. And I'm gonna remove these, uh, these lines in the background. In my select data window, I'm gonna make sure these series are named properly. And it's just so that we see the year under the, each of the bars. So I'm actually gonna remove the bottom legend. I'm gonna add labels to the bars themselves. Upper left corner, go to data labels, and I'm gonna do inside base in this example. And I'm gonna click into those and I'm actually gonna change those to show the series name so that the year shows up there. Because we're already gonna have the values over on the left. For my colors, I'm gonna do a kind of transparent white on one side, bright white on the other. And of course, I'm gonna to have to update my uh, font choices so that we can actually read the font on that background. 
Now we want to make sure that our axis has the right min and max values. And this is so that we can compare the data across multiple bar charts. We're going to have one for Norway, one for Denmark, and one for Sweden. We know our maximum value here is 15, so I'm just going to go one higher than that, just so there's a little padding on top. And we're going to make sure we use the same min and max values in our other ones. I'll show you that in a sec. Once that's all updated, I'm going to delete the labels here for the axes and just get it in place. Now here's a little trick. I know I'm going to repeat this style over and over again. So I'm going to go to change chart type, save as template, name it whatever you want, hit save. And then when you build future charts, you can go in here and under the template section, it'll be included in there so that you can use the exact same settings on the other charts you add. All right, I'm just going to copy paste my little separator, bring that down here for our next section. And then we're going to get the double pie added in here. So, okay, so we're going to take that same table we did before, highlight the whole thing under the insert tab. We're going to go to the pie section. We're going to go to donut. It's going to drop in this double donut for us. I'm going to cut this, paste it over. And as always, we're going to clean this up, drop out the background, and grab a font color with enough contrast as always. We also need to drop some labels in here so we know which ring is which year. Now it's going to look like a little bit of a mess at first, so we're going to have to clean it up. I don't need labels for every single value in every single uh, country here. What I need is just the year itself, and I only need one of them. So I'm going to delete most of these and just leave the ones I need. And of course, before I do that, I'm actually going to get a color that matches my background. So I'm going to start with the default colors and just find the one that's closest and then customize them as I go. All right, now let's get these labels cleaned up. That's looking much better. And you'll see that for the label, we switch this over to just be the series name, which is just going to show the year. We've deleted all the extra ones. We've just got one for the inner ring, one for the outer rings. We'll know what those rings represent. Okay, so I think it's time to add in a slope chart. We're going to select our whole table. Go to insert and we're going to drop in a line chart, a line chart that has markers like this one. Now we're going to have to change our data selection because we don't want to plot the years. Boop. There you go. Now you're starting to see that slope a little more clearly. And the only other thing we need to do is make sure these labels show up. Hit select data, horizontal axis label category. We're going to highlight the year. Okay. And now we've got our year showing up. So let's get this moved over and clean it up and get it all formatted. So I just kind of roughly get it in place and then we remove the title, background, same thing as usual. Get the font to something we can actually see. I think our grid lines here are helpful. I'm just going to just make them a little less bright so they don't stand out as much. And then I got to get all these colors updated for the series. Like I did before, I'm just going to get the closest thing to start with and then adjust them individually to get them just right. You just click into each individual line and you can select what color you want. And you can also go into the marker and select the marker size. I'm going to go a little bigger for these markers uh, and update, of course, the fill and the border to match the line color. So I'm going to just go through each of these. So I played around with the colors, enough contrast here so you can tell them all apart. And then I also did this thing here. So if you go to chart design, insert or add chart element, there's this line option. They're drop lines. They essentially kind of line everything up here. I like adding these on slope charts. And for this one, what I've done is I've given it a fill that is a gradient. So from a somewhat transparent white to a fully transparent white. And I've just done dashing. This is one of the dash type options in there. And I just feel like that makes it a little easier to tell that these are all representing the same year. They're all kind of on the same line there. And one last thing, we've got this blank space here. I always like to leave a little room to add context to explain things verbally. So we're just going to drop a little text box in here where somebody could add a note, add context, add whatever they need to make this make sense. Data visualization requires a lot of interpretation and you really want to make sure that people have all the information they need to interpret it properly. So starting with just those six data points, and getting a little creative, we've been able to build a whole dashboard that gives some useful insights into what we're looking at. So yeah, thanks again, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and uh, I'll be back soon. Bye.